Hello and welcome to Console Shock Retro and Modern Gaming Chat with me, Trev and Stu. How's it going, Stu? Oh, it's going good, Trev. Going good. <laughs> going good. What have you been up to? Working, playing uh, playing my Switch quite a lot. Oh, no, no, no. I've got into my Vita. Gone back, gone back. Oh, wow. To, yeah, to the Vita. Yeah, play, you, got, you, you modded it, didn't you? Or jail, jailbreaked it or whatever? I modded it probably about sort of nine months ago and um, just sort of went back to sort of playing it and um and it yeah it's, it's, it's such a good little good little machine brilliant well, what do you do stuff. is it just the vita games or have you got like psp going no, and ps1 no, just, going just, just, just the vita games on, on there so, so you got all 12 other... vita games on it oh nice, all, nice one well, the 12 good ones fifa that, that, that... fifa 13 14 15 <laughs> I, I, do you know what i have got fifa 15 on there that was the last one, wasn't it? That came out on it. That well, that was. I thought, oh, that that'll be the best one. But it's just the same as all the others. There's there's, there's no difference uh, to it. So, yeah, the first one was impressive. I think it was just called FIFA Football on the Vita because it was actually mm. sort of PS3 like and season or something, wasn't it? Yeah, it came out. Yeah, because it came out at a weird time, didn't it? The Vita, but. Um, I remember it was being it was the first sort of handheld version that was you know basically the, the home consoles version was it? it was like the 360 and the yeah. PS3 version like in your hand that was kind of mind blowing because we've been used to sort of playing regurgitated PS2 version of FIFA on whatever handheld was the one we were playing so that was cool well that's kind of basically what we're getting now with the Switch isn't it we're getting the regurgitated last gen version of yeah, FIFA but, year, um, the legacy version. Yeah, yeah. Although yeah. well, now with the Steam Deck, I guess you can just you know you just be able to play the regular, the regular latest version. Well, actually, no, the PC version isn't the next gen version yet. EA Is have made not? a point of no because they're, they're worried that not enough people have powerful PCs yet to handle the whatever which is ridiculous because a sports game is always you know fairly weak in terms of graphics intent you know requirements you could probably bung the next gen version and you know a potato would still be able to run it but anyway that that, that that's another another discussion um yeah well one question i will throw at you because it'd be a good one that will lead into what we're going to be talking about are you a fan of the Saturn, Stu? I love the Saturn. You, you know, you know that, Trev. Yeah, I'm, I'm I think a big, I do. Big fan of the Saturn. What, um, what, what was your experience as a, of its original release? Did you have it from day do, one? Do you or? know what? It actually originally when it came out, I, I think I had one at one point, and I had I had a few games for it, but it, it, it wasn't until later that um, maybe sort of five six years ago um, I got a Saturn. And I went and picked up, you know, really like sort of the Japanese <clears throat> games and um, yeah. got sort of quite a nice little collection um, of them. And I've got the Hitachi Saturn, the High Saturn with, with the VCD card in. And I think I've watched, oh, wow. um, yeah, I've watched almost half a VCD at one point. Well, that's and, more um, than most people, I would think. <laughs> yeah, it, it wasn't the best experience, but um, so I have used it. And um, yeah, I've, I've always liked the Saturn, and um, yeah, some really good sort of good games sort of came out of uh, sort of Japan for it. And uh, yeah, I so. do love I do love me some MPEG One video. You got to love a bit of MPEG One, haven't you? Yeah, the original and best MPEG of all time, I think, in my opinion. Three twenty yeah. by two forty, whatever it is. Yeah, they ruined it with MPEG Two. I know. This, this, yeah, and then it's, got, it's gone out of hand now, isn't it? Well, I don't know what they're on now, MPEG 30 or, or, or no, something. Is it even MPEG now? I don't even know on like Blu-ray. Yeah, but anyway, know. yeah, at whatever that is. Um, basically, the reason why, well, I guess you, you people know why we're, we're talking about Saturn. It's in the thumbnail, it's in the description. But mm. um, we have a guest on today, and it's a Sega Saturn-themed guest. Today we're welcoming on Nick from the Pandemonium Reviews Every US Saturn Game, youtube channel thanks for coming on nick yeah thanks for having me on guys this is great yeah um so uh, the reason we got you on because we're, we're big fans of your channel um you. there's a lot of satin content out there but i think what appeals to us about your channel is you kind of do these really long form kind of deep dives into um the satin library or i think you're sort of trying to work your way through mm -hmm. i think is that still your goal to literally get through every u.s satin game it is, yeah. I mean, it might take a long time. I might be like well into my thirties by episode two forty six, but right, you know, yeah. we'll see how long it takes. There are some phases where I get a lot of free time, and some where I don't get as much. So it just kind of depends on how things are going. Well, you've done a pretty good job so far of getting through, a, you know, a good a good bundle of of them. So you know, we I'm sure you'll be able to get get through all of them. I mean, how many are there actually? Two hundred and forty, fifty ish. 
I think. 246. That's if you're only counting like real deal United States games. That's not including like the three game pack or the internet browser games, though I'll probably take a look at the internet browser games. Um, I didn't even realize there were games on the internet browser. Well, I don't know if they're games, but if the internet, I say, <laughs> I am using the word game loosely, I guess. Yeah, yeah. It's the internet browser, but it comes in like a game disc and everything. So it's probably but, like Flash version one. Sort probably. Of games sure or can, something. So, might so take me you, like. Nick, do you actually own all, all of the games? So <laughs> or are you sort of like, okay, well, I've, I've got, you know, 50 of my favorites that I like, and then I'll, you know, buy the rest as and when or. Right. I've I've got some real games, but like most Saturn uh, owners, um, the, the Saturn games have been notoriously expensive since yeah. the beginning of retro game collecting. Oh, yeah. Um, so like many, I do pirate a lot of my Saturn games, um, though. When I'm <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, no, I know I'm a friggin <laughs> bandit over here. But um, I mean, I've got some like I have the real copy of Gen War, Sega Rally. Of course, I got to have a real copy of Pebble Beach Golf Links and everybody. Every yeah. collection needs it. Nick, um, I am I am disgusted that you weren't willing to spend four hundred dollars <laughs> on Panzer Dragoon Saga. Sega need that money from that from that secondhand sale of that game. That's right. <laughs> I don't know if you've looked lately, Trev, but Saga's going for well over a thousand dollars. I guess it, yeah. Now. It's oh like my God. it's ridiculous. Like I think two years ago, even four hundred, five hundred would have been accurate. But no, nah, it's it's that that thing's going to be like quadruple digits until the discs all rot out to hell you know I think yeah i heard a, a, a it was one of those i don't know myths or something that you never know is true that sega lost the um the source code to it so it, it can never be ported to anything else and I, I don't know how true that is but i think i've heard that from about three different people and maybe it's the the, the, the you know the story just goes round and round and it's repeated <laughs> so many times it's true but you know, uh, here the, the thing about that is I don't even know how helpful the source code would be, like, because mm. it was programmed on really old hardware, and nowadays we have, like, Unity yeah. and all these engines and stuff, so if mm. you were to try to convert that into modern-day stuff, it would probably be more difficult than what it'd be worth, and it's not like you're going to have the original, like, the original few amount of guns on every enemy in a newer version. It'd be, like, totally redesigned enemies, but... Uh, yeah. also they they can do what they did. Um, I, I just watched um, your, your video earlier about virtual racing. Yeah, where they made the virtual racing and go, yeah. oh, well, here, here's a video. You know, go and play it for a bit, and then make a copy of it. Um, yep. <laughs> they could do that. The same with uh, <laughs> that's Panzer literally it. Saga. If Sega had to do it themselves, they made Time Warner do it. Now they got to eat yeah. their own medicine with that. <laughs> <laughs> I love that game. Do. It's one of my fa it's my favorite Saturn racing game, Virtual Vir Racing. Virtual Racing, yeah, it's a good one. Yeah, uh, it it is hated by many, uh, oh, but yes. loved by many as well. You know, it's it's a it's a controversial pick, and I, I definitely respect it. It's a great game. I just like the fact it's got a campaign in it, really. Um, yeah, or a career. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. That's very rare in those days. Until we got to like Colin McRae and Gran Turismo, which was still a couple of years out. Um, that was a good example of an early kind of attempt. Well, there was also 16-bit games like the Lotus Turbo Challenge games on the Mega Drive and things mm -hmm. like that, which had a career. But um, certainly in taking an arcade game that was just your, your, your three tracks um, to, to sort of expand on it, which Sega made no attempt to do, really, in their they other... They didn't. No, yeah. No. They, like, even Sega Rally, yeah. port to the Saturn, it was just, you know, had the three original tracks. It had Lakeside. I don't remember if Lakeside was in the arcade original or not. I've only really played the Saturn yeah. version, but... Um, but yeah, like even Sega didn't add nearly as much to their arcade ports as Time Warner did to Virtua Racing. That was pretty ahead of its time in that regard. Yeah, I mean, you, so you, you could say that a lot of these Sega arcade games, as revered as they are, and I do love Sega Rally and Virtua Fighter, you're looking at maybe half an hour of gameplay, really? <laughs> yeah. You know, like, like the, right. Yeah. Depending on how into it you want to get, yeah. yeah. You're, you're probably going to pop it in for a little while and be like, all right, great, that was fun. Let's put in something else 30 minutes yeah. after starting it, so the replay value is really in oh, i need to beat my best time you know or for yeah. a complete uh virtual fight or fighter on hard which would take probably a probably would take you a long time to you know to adapt to the harder difficulty that's really it um yep. so yeah that's it's virtual fight virtual racing was um quite a pioneer in, in, in that and um, i admire the guys that to deal with it but we'll go back um to the start with you nick on 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 the saturn so where 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 did you kind of begin with the Saturn? Really, did you have it originally in '95 when it came out? Was it a little bit later you picked it up? Where where did you start with the Saturn? 
Well, funny you should say that. So I was born in 94. So. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> so I you was, when you were two uh, or a three? Or... <laughs> <laughs> I, I was born in October of 94 and the Saturn came out in Japan in November of 94. So you can yeah. say I'm like about as old as the console. Yeah. Uh, so no, I, I didn't get it when it came out. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I, I actually grew up on Super Nintendo and PlayStation. Um, right. like throughout the 90s and then a bunch of friends had n64s and stuff so i had played a lot of the n64 games i got into like retro stuff like early high school and middle school so roughly around 2009 2010 yeah. and right around there i immediately discovered the dreamcast and saturn and like what both of those consoles had to offer and both looked like like to me they had a lot of the games i liked i really enjoyed the the older arcade stuff yeah. And obviously Sega was a friggin' prince at keeping those types of games on home consoles. And so, um, so yeah, I think I got the Saturn like around my first Saturn, I got it like 2010 and, uh, very quickly put a mod chip into it. Cause I knew right away that I didn't want to spend a bajillion dollars. You look at the prices in 2010 oh, yeah. and they're, they're a joke nowadays. Cause it was so much cheaper than they are now. But even then I was, uh, sailing the high seas when it came to saturn games so um but yeah, yeah. And since and since then i just burned game after game getting my hands on pretty much whatever i could find online and uh played through much of the saturn classics a lot of the weird obscure ones and uh yeah and since then that's been my pretty much my favorite console because it just has the kind of games that i like on it um i like the look of them i like the the jankiness of many of the 3d games and the yeah, really smooth yeah. 2d stuff that they were able to pull off on it like i think it's a an ultimate retro lovers machine because it's got really good 2d stuff and really old looking 3d stuff and it, a lot of it's really well done and a lot of it's really niche stuff that you're yeah. not going to find in pretty much any other console so yeah that's kind of how i got started with that yeah, we've uh, we've touched upon the price, you know, a few times already now. Yeah. Start the podcast, and I think, uh, I mean, some people could probably correct me in like, you know, the comments or whatever. But when when the video is live, but um, I think when you when you sort of list, you know, what are the most expensive consoles to collect for, I mean, you probably have to say, obviously, Neo Geo might be number one. Yeah. I think <laughs> it might be number one, uh, and then maybe PC Engine might be slightly below that. Um, mm -hmm. Slash Turbo Graphics, some of those games are crazy. Probably Saturn might be far behind those two. Um, it I is, think, yeah. yeah. I think it'd be in that top three. I, think I mean, it's catching up, but yeah, it's it's definitely like Neo Geo prices are astounding. I think people have literally almost been murdered over Neo Geo games. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I've I've got um, I do have a Neo Geo CD because at the time I got it, it was the nice. cheaper option. Yeah, yeah. Um, not not when it came out. This is like again, like like sometime in the 2010s, I was able to get my hands on one when it was still relatively cheap. But even the CD games, like Metal Slug Two, mm -hmm. that's like uh, hundreds of pounds for the CD. <laughs> Jeez. You know, so, um, yeah, I mean, thankfully, with a, a Neo Geo CD, you can burn games. So that's what I did. That's how yeah. I got to play Metal Slug and things like that. Some of the cheaper games, like King of Fighters, a lot of these came out on the Saturn, of course. Um, mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know if the Neo Geo CD versions of, I guess they're kind of more authentic because they're obviously made by SNK. And, uh, but some of them do have some cut, cut down things in them because, the, um, you know, the, the CD version of the console struggled a bit with loading times and RAM and all of that. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, that was where I discovered a lot of those games. And some of the King of the Fighters games are cheaper, like, you know, 20, 20, 30 dollars or 20, 10, 20 pounds. But yeah, even some of them are, are definitely going up in price. Um, For sure. Um, but yeah, there's obviously, there's easier ways to do it now. But yeah, when it comes to price, I mean, I would say um, I don't like to pay. I mean, I'll, I'll, if it's something I really want. I will pay. I would go up to 200, 300 pounds for something as a as a stupid collector. I mean, <laughs> have you gone that that far in terms of buying uh, in your Saturn collecting? You don't have to just name an exact price, but have you been up there? <laughs> I, I've I've never spent anything into the triple digits on like Saturn games and oh, other good. retro <laughs> games. I I don't know. It's just I I enjoy playing the games more than I do collecting, though I do like collecting some stuff uh it's just i don't know if if it's more than 60 dollars and you're just playing it you're just buying it to play it probably not worth that much <laughs> yeah yeah but um i i don't know I've, I've i've strayed from that every now and then like that, there was a limited run shantae box that i blew nearly 100 bucks on recent like well i guess i got it like last I'll year but it run. didn't ship yeah. until like last week i think <laughs> right, yeah. but 
and I've got the Metroid Prime Trilogy collection on the Wii, like the crazy metal box version, and um, for yeah, Saturn I stuff. I love that one I, over here as yeah. well. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. That's a that's a it's classic. Metroid Prime is for sure one of my like top five games of all time. I friggin' love it. Uh, but yeah, for Saturn games, like I've got a fair amount of them, but I don't think I've ever spent more than fifty bucks in a Saturn game either because I found good deals on them just locally or or, um, or what or through lots or what have you, or uh, they just weren't fifty dollars when I bought them. So I always uh, think of um, there was one day you remember um, this when I was a teenager when the Saturn was still um, you know a commercial pro. It was really putting it on its last legs. This is about ni- ni- late ninety seven, early ninety eight. Yeah, yeah, I remember going into a, sh- a store. Um, we have I think you had them in the in the states as well, uh, Virgin Mega Store um near where i lived in colchester and um i used to go there all the time to check out the latest games and um Nick they did have do an accent sorry <laughs> what? <laughs> what just because i'm yeah, not, yeah go, do a colchester accent okay. <laughs> it's a standard english accent i think it's fairly un, 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 unremarkable um you're obsessed with accents Stu. god um <laughs> so, no, um, <laughs> We we didn't mention on on oh I'm going into it but uh, don't no, leave, leave, leave it shoot leave it I'm, I'm yeah we'll, we'll right. leave it it's, it's, so, it's uh, not for this <laughs> so uh, yeah in like Virgin Megastore they had they had a small Sega Saturn section amazingly that was about you know perhaps what you see in like I guess for you a GameStop Nick um, for us like you know game or uh, we have GameStop mm-hmm. here actually as well um, like three maybe columns of, of games on like a small kind of gondola um, <laughs> and I remember they had Street Fighter Collection um, which is now like I, I've bought a copy since then it cost me a lot of money um, yeah. but I bought it and it was like 20 pounds and it was also in a two-for-one deal nice. and I think you could get I think they had Mortal Kombat Trilogy so you mm. could have got one of those you would have got both for 20 pounds in 1998 now you're looking at both of them together a lot 500 more. pounds <laughs> yeah. yeah um I, I, I had some cash on me but i was like nah <laughs> then so i think i think i said i'll get i think i'll get the playstation version i think mm-hmm. i said to myself so um that, yeah, that, that was a, that was a terrible mistake. <laughs> that game, that game is one of uh, behind one of my biggest regrets in Saturn stuff. I oh like, really? Yeah, because I back in in high school, like 2010, 2011, I, I bought it in box, the American copy for like uh, it was somewhere less than forty dollars with shipping. Yeah, that's good. And, yeah, yeah, and then it was great condition. Played the heck out of it, and then there was like a period of time where I sold some of my games, and that was one of the games I sold. And I'm really oh like God. any of the Saturn games I've ever sold, I've kicked myself on. Like I had Galactic Attack, which I bought for five bucks, complete American copy. Oh God! Also sold that one, and now that one's going for like nearly, if not at a hundred bucks. Like, oh my God, <laughs> it's crazy how much it's changed since then. I think so, everyone's got that story, haven't they? Of like, yeah, uh, I like um in sort of mid uh, late mid 2000s so i had like a, a pc engine duo console the white nice. one um yeah. and um i got it cheap from it wasn't like super cheap even then but it was cheaper than it is now and i got it from japan I and mean, it came with a big bundle of games mm-hmm. of cd games and hue card games all in the cases with the manuals oh, i picked nice. up a couple more myself i got the turbo graphics version of, of uh, uh, Fighting Street, which is the original Street Fighter one, <laughs> that they I don't know, they called it Fighting Street. They called it, it Fighting Street. Yeah, I, I've never heard of that. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's it's literally Street Fighter one. Um, right. And um, I got that box sealed. Uh, it came sealed. I opened it to play it, <laughs> which is probably a lot of people be like, "Yeah, right on, man. You need to open sealed games." But I did it, and um. But I sold it, and it, I think I, I can't remember if I really needed some money at some point. But like a year later, I sold that whole bun- bundle, oh, to start, no. and someone bought it from me. And and what was hilarious is it was on eBay, and the person yeah. gave me negative feedback. And he, the, the negative feedback was the games are all Japanese; they're really difficult to understand. Um, I, I can't oh, play any of them. And it's like, dude, you you bought a PC engine; it's famous what for being Japanese. Expect? Yeah, exactly. it, but yeah, I regret that because it was a huge bundle that I had that um, would have. I've had to rebuy a lot of that stuff. I've managed to kind of build up a little bit of a co- of a collection again. I think I probably have more games now than I had then. But um, yeah, that was my. Stu, have you got one of them stories of like oh, I sold I've, this? I've, I've got plenty. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you had a I, shop, I, so I don't know if you like you know that well, added the, an the, extra the, layer. That's it. The the things that um, Nick, I, I used to run a video game shop in uh, in South London. Nice and. Um, you know, so many things have sort of come um, o- over the counter, and, and and people always sort of say, "Oh, sure, yeah, I remember. I, I bought this game off you for, you know, 
30 pounds and, and and now it's worth hundreds and you know we'll <laughs> buy them we'll make our money on them and and, yeah. and, and sell them and and that that was what, what we did and there were sort of so many games you sort of you think back and god yeah yeah i had a copy of that we had that in that we, we you know it's pretty much every game was ever sort of been out as, as, as yeah. would been through would have been through the shop at some point and you think god if i only panzer um, dragoon saga yeah, we've we've had that in a couple of times. Oh, oh man, God. you must have you must have flashbacks to that every night, man. Yeah. <laughs> every and, time you look at your Saturn, <laughs> yeah, with radiant silver gun in. Oh, uh, oh my God, no. I had that in, in in a few times, and um, yeah, it was it was yeah some some really good stuff, and um, yeah, it was actually amazing. But Nick, I wanted to sort of ask you, and obviously with your videos, um, if people haven't watched them. They're a very high quality. I Thank would you. say and a lot of research goes into them. And you see, um, there are some people who obviously do review videos, and it's oh yeah, the graphics. I give them seven out of ten, and oh yeah, this that that's good. Oh, it's you know, it's, it's all very a little bit descriptive, and it gives you a little bit of an idea. But you mm -hmm. tend to you know really sort of, as, as Trev mentioned earlier, sort of deep dive I I into the games, the history, and you, you know, and get quotes from people and stuff. So. I guess, I guess sort of where, where did you learn that or <laughs> <laughs> yeah so I um you know fun fact I, I I actually made some reviews on YouTube like way back in like high school like in mm. that era those are no longer online because they were really <laughs> bad they were now. not good <laughs> yeah. um I can send you some unlisted links if you really want to uh, see them but <laughs> yeah but we know what you feel. We, we're the same with our early, oh, yeah. the early shows of Console Shock. Uh, very little <laughs> editing. There's no music. We sound terrible. Some people mm. might think they're okay, but I don't. I don't like listening to them. But they're there. I've left them, but I don't oh, go yeah. back to them. Yeah. Anyone who creates content will go through that. They'll look back, like even the first few episodes of the yeah. Pandemonium series. I'm like, I could have done this a little better because the right. series really evolved as I went. Um, but so professionally, I'm a television news reporter. And uh, like a local news reporter and um, background to that, I went to college for broadcast journalism and uh, did a lot of that stuff in high school as well as like electives and stuff. And that was yeah. kind of like that builds up my journalism background. And so, um, you know, when I started the series, I'm like, well, I want to make Saturn videos again because I had a lot of fun doing it in high school. I mm. finished college and I wanted to get going with it and I was trying to think of ways to like, you know, make it stand out, make it a little different. So um, I think it was like, I don't know if you guys know Matt Stoney, where uh, he's like a competitive eater and he like eats ridiculous amounts of food in like record time, like once a week or so. Oh, well, he's yeah. like, a, he, he's he's competed against Kobayashi for the hot dog eating contest and stuff like that. You, oh, well, you, should, you, should, you should look him up. One. Yeah, that one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, I, he, uh, I, I was, I don't know, I, I watch his videos every now and then. I'm like, oh, he does a ridiculous large amount of things. Uh, what if I did a ridiculous large amount of Saturn videos? And, mm. <laughs> and I thought about <laughs> doing every single Saturn game. And then when I looked it up, if you include the Japanese and PAL exclusives, it's mainly the Japanese exclusives that make up the whole global collection. There's like more than a thousand of them. And I'm like, mm. no, I'm never going to finish that. There's yeah. no way I could ever do yeah. that. Even if I did like five minute videos once a week that no, I'm not doing that. And then yeah. I saw that I was like, well, there aren't that many American games. And so I uh, was like, oh, I'll do that. And then if I do them in release date order, that'll kind of tell a nice story. That'll tell a good story with like what happened with the Saturn in America. Because as some of the, many of the viewers may know, the Saturn had a very difficult uh, time in the United States. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like in the, the Western world. Here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, same in Europe. You know, I think Europe, it did a little better, especially when you look at like Portugal. It did extremely well in Portugal. Yeah, and... yeah I mean, there's always copies of games that have that Sega Yellow Portugal thing on there. And I'm like, yep. why is there so many of these? But yeah, I guess it sold really well. It was super, Sega in general is super successful there. And the, the Saturn was for yeah. sure no different. But uh, yeah, and in, in the United States though, no, no. <laughs> it, uh, it, yeah. it should have done well. And it's like, well, why do we have this console where the games are so sought after that people are paying literally hundreds and hundreds of dollars to for a single game and yet when it was out here like nobody liked it you know and why did all these games in japan come out that didn't come out like why didn't we get symphony of the night you know why didn't we get yeah. you know more copies of panzer dragoon saga that that in my mind beats final fantasy 7 it, it should have beat final fantasy 7 but it was just yeah a lot of you get a lot of stories like that and so like well i'll just you know i'll do this and then 
I was like, all right, I got to find the release dates. I got to make sure I get the right order. And that was tough. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> the Saturn in the US was very poorly documented. I started with GameFAQs release dates, like GameFAQs.com mm. release dates. And a yeah, lot you, of those... you've deep dived into like literally like Usenet posts, haven't you, yep. to find out exactly when something's come out. I mean, where do you find that? <laughs> you know, that's crazy. <laughs> the Usenet <laughs> stuff actually came from a buddy of mine. Uh, she goes by Pimpo online um, and uh, found a bunch of these like sources, like old magazine scans, and actually found Usenet um, yeah. through some other some some other person they knew found Usenet, and then um, that's when I think it took like at least two or three years before that list was actually some set had some semblance of good accuracy. Cause yeah. before, you know, I was like, all right, the game FAQs release dates, half of them are wrong. And some of them were like m several months off of the real date. And then Sega retro.com. I think I, I, it's either dot or right website. Com. Yeah. I, love yeah that website. I, I use that. I use that to get some more accurate release dates and still some of those stand true. And then through the sources that they use and through the sources that came through Usenet, like old websites that are still like old Saturn fan websites from the 90s that are still alive through like the Internet Archive, the Wayback Machine, like a combination of magazine scans and Usenet posts and store listings and those old websites and all eventually came together to form what we have now. And I, I still have it in my bookmarks tab. I, I frequently go back to it. That was that whole release date spreadsheet, which you can find a link to in the description of every video in the series. Uh, that took years. That took years. And Pimpo helped create, I would say, about half of the, the sources that this, wow. this spreadsheet uses. So that was really a team effort between myself and Pimpo and a small handful of other people who found things here and there that just like, hey, I found this. You might find it useful. And I'm like, yes, I do. Thank you very yeah. much. <laughs> um, so just it's like yeah. archaeologists, you're like Saturn archaeologists. <laughs> it was yeah. really what it felt yeah. like. That's, yeah. <laughs> like digging it's into crazy. the like digging into the like the the, the ruins and and, and fields of <laughs> dead internet websites. Because Sega, Sega don't care about any of this stuff. They just move they on don't. to the next thing, yeah. and they, they they drop the old stuff like a, a part, unless it's Sonic and Golden Axe and Streets of Rage re-releases, the same yep. ones that we get every few years on whatever the latest console is. They don't really care. But it's only about the Saturn and the Dreamcast. I mean... Um, oh, yeah, they dropped the Saturn like a box of Sonic Extreme copies. Like, yeah, they <laughs> stopped caring about anything to do with documenting it or re-releasing games. Like, yeah, it's, it's the red-headed stepchild for them. So they drop the Saturn like they would drop the development team and get someone else to work on House of the Dead and take a touring car and uh, exactly. <laughs> so we ended up with those versions of those games. Um, yeah, although actually, uh, House of the Dead's all right, but it just looks a bit. Bad. It's you know, it's it plays fine. It's just yeah. yeah, the textures could be. I think they're like someone was able to like figure out. I think it was like fifty percent of the textures are really not what they should look like. So, um, I don't know. There's someone in the homebrew scene yeah. who's like really looked into that. I don't know if they're ever going to mod it or anything like that. Oh, but that'd that's, be amazing. Yeah, yeah. That would that would be a that'd be a heck of a project. And probably if you had if you get the right tools and the right team, you could probably do it. Now the team the 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 scene for it's grown quite a bit in the past couple of years in particular. But anyway, yeah. yeah long long story short, that's how I made the spreadsheet and I started the series um, while the spreadsheet was still in progress. So some of the videos are now out of order and I got to renumber them. I've re already re-uploaded some episodes and only to have them get out of order again. And so now I'm just like, well, right. I'll just I'll just renumber the titles and maybe someday way later on I'll re-upload a few. I, I don't think people are going to call you out. Go, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> this came out before that one. <laughs> I will you know, YouTube, wrong. don't worry. Yeah. I think like no, maybe sure one person's on complained about it ever. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So but yeah. So, so, so there's also so, sorry, go ahead, Jeff. No, no, you go ahead, Stu. You go ahead. I was um sort of quite interested in, in the so, again, not related to video games, but you've been a, a news reporter and I, I love watching on YouTube the uh the sort of the local news reports from from the US and yeah. they're, they're absolutely brilliant and we don't get <laughs> believe it or not we don't get news like that in, in the UK it's all very national driven and Wait, seriously yeah we we, we you, you get you know sure. London today and, and 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 stuff but i i, I think you get more it's, it's more focused on your sort of local area and um you know mm -hmm. a shooting's gone on over here or Right. Some, something's happened over there and um ours is 
I don't know, more political driven and <laughs> interesting, um, you know, I- I- international sort of focus. But I thought, I thought it was just fascinating that you're a news reporter um, in, in, in the US. And um, how, how did you sort of get into that? Just I, uh, I went to college in uh, Moorhead for Moorhead, Minnesota, which is a smaller yeah. city. It's like four hours away from Minneapolis. Uh, and that's right next to Fargo. It's like right across the state okay. line. And um, uh, it's basically like Moorhead and Fargo are pretty much the same metro area there. You could almost call them the same city. Just don't tell that to anyone who's from the area because they'll get mad no. at you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, um, but yeah, so I, uh, through college, I had some internships and built up a lot of, you know, uh, contacts and people who I, you know, knew who worked news in Fargo. And um, that was pretty much how I wound up getting my first job. So started at the Fox affiliate in Fargo and then moved to the ABC affiliate where I'm at now uh, about four years ago. And yeah, no, like, like you said, we do focus a lot on the local area. I'm kind of surprised yeah. to hear that you don't really get that. I mean, I guess London, you probably get that, but like say well, Middlesbrough, do. I mean, you don't really have you, anything you, like that. You get the national news. <laughs> sure. Um, and, and then after that, there'll be the local news and it's, it's usually very similar to the national news, but oh, um, shoot. <laughs> sort of focus a little bit on, I guess, more local, mo- local issues. And, uh, right on. um, but I, th- I think, I think the sort of the focus I've been to America a couple of times and it's, it's always sort of interesting, uh, I, I guess sort of watching the, the, the news there and um, she's looking to get done. a job, she's looking to get a job as a TV <laughs> I, uh, news reporter, yeah, yeah, right, so, uh, yeah. Need a just trying to get in some insight. <laughs> 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 oh, 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 yeah. crying out for that, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> um, one thing, I mean, I guess maybe your, your news reporting kind of helps with this, but um, mm, yeah. your experience in that, but um. You obviously have guests on uh, um, some of your episodes, people that developed some of these Saturn games. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, like probably my favorite video of yours is the SimCity 2000 video because I'm a big fan of that game generally. So oh, I'm great. interested yeah. in the the weird sort of console ports that it got, um, the Saturn mm-hmm. being you know probably the best one, I think. Um, and I've played the SNES version and there's also the PS1 version, which I don't think is as good as the Saturn one. Right. Um, but how did you get? How did, how did you find these people? I mean, what are they like when you found them? Are they happy to talk about this stuff? Is it weird to them? Have they forgotten <laughs> it all? How's that experience been of getting the, the the developers involved? Yeah, so I mean, once I got into the part of the library where more of the games were actually developed in the United States, you know, obviously the first many, the first several were not, and yeah. I didn't really start interviewing, or at least I didn't start reaching out to devs until about mm, dozen episodes into the series, and. Yeah. Uh, you know, I uh, you, you look at the credits, you see the names, you look in the instruction manual, which usually has the credits in there, and then and then I start looking them up, uh, see where they're at now. Um, many of them have left the video game industry years ago. Right. Some are still in it, uh, but reaching out to them, the methods of doing that, um, and this kind of calls back to my you know roots in broadcast journalism. I was I'm able to apply a lot of what I do in that to. Uh, what I do in the yeah. YouTube series and vice versa. So some people I've reached out to through like LinkedIn Messenger um, and some oh, people cool. through Facebook Messenger, if I can find their Facebook profile and like connect the dots. I, You know, there's that Always Sunny in Philadelphia screenshot where Charlie's got the board with like a million lines going across. So that, that's kind of what <laughs> yeah. I start looking like and acting like when I try to find these people and track them down. Yeah. <laughs> Smoking but, a fag like, uh, you, you exactly. know, shirt untucked and like, yeah. <laughs> Craze look on the face. <laughs> exactly. Bloodshot eyes, you know, all sorts of sweat going on, right? Yeah, just back and forth, all ball, you know, bouncing off the walls trying to find these people, right? You know, some yeah. people I've reached out to some people and um I, and and I I just don't hear back from them. Either because they don't use that social media thing that I reached out to them with or the email yeah. wasn't correct or um, but the people that I do hear back from 95% of the time agree to chat about it. Because they, you know, the '90s, early thousands was definitely a renaissance for video game development, and it's the glory days yeah. for a lot of these people who were video game developers. It was when it's they still were the ex- wild west. In exactly. Some extent, isn't it? Yeah, so you could only have a more. Yeah, you could have a team of a dozen sweaty dudes in a small office make a AAA game. You didn't need like yeah. a million people to work on it, right? Mm. And uh, they were excited to work sixty-hour work weeks and sleep under the desk. It was like their lifestyle. This was like the glory days. And all, almost all of them, all of the ones who've reached back out to me, said, "Oh, absolutely. You know, these are 
these these were good times. I'll definitely talk with you about them, even like the bad yeah. stuff, even like the crazy stuff that we had to deal with from Sega or from whatever they dealt with, you know. Um, and yeah, yeah, they're all they're always excited. Even even uh, uh, you've probably seen the high octane and theme park episodes, but even yeah, Peter Molyneux turned Mollen, out. You. Yeah, yeah, he, he, even he was like <laughs> he wasn't. <laughs> I interviewed him twice because he, I, I had a lot of questions for him because he was involved in a lot of games, some of which were canceled. Um, so he like syndicate right, Wars yeah. was originally in development for Saturn and that, that got canceled. I wanted to talk oh, to him. So that's stuff a great like that game. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Great PS1 game, yeah. He, he was an hour late to both interviews. <laughs> oh, <was he? laughs> <All right. laughs> like more than an hour late getting yeah. like, he was, he was a gem of a human being to speak with. Like he's an excellent storyteller and he's just an absolutely delightful person to like have a conversation with. Like he's, he's, he's a great, great person to chat with, but he was the least punctual <laughs> person I've ever dealt with professionally for interviews. Did in you ask him about Street. Larry Bundy? <laughs> I oh, thought God, yeah. about it. <laughs> It's a bit of a rivalry. <laughs> I, it, it's just like every video. It, oh, I know. Who will make? Oh well, Peter Molyneux. You know, oh. it's funny you mentioned that. I I didn't ask Peter about Larry Bundy Jr., but Larry did comment on one of the Peter Molyneux videos that I did, and he didn't say anything about Peter. And I replied to him like, like, ah, oh, what did he say? I'd have to look at it. I replied to him like, I'm really surprised you're not saying anything about my interview subject, <laughs> given your reputation. Yeah, and um. You know, I, I'd have to look and see what he responded with, but he had some kind of cheeky response to it. It was either in the high octane or the theme park video. I think it was the theme park video. Hang on, I'm trying to pull it up. I, w I, w I want to see thing, what he said. The great <laughs> thing about Larry is, like, I, I feel like wh whatever I, I could be looking at some, you know, fairly relatively obscure YouTube channel watching a video on some game that I'm into that, um, yeah. That the, the, some creators made an amazing thing, you know, and the, and I'll look down at the comments and Larry will be in there. That dude like, is everywhere. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. All over. <laughs> yeah, we've had him yeah. on. Uh, he was on like uh, quite a while ago now, about four years Two ago. Years we had ago, him on I think, show. yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, he seems like great a fun dude. dude. <laughs> he's a really, he's one of our most fun episodes. He's a re really good laugh. Um, I, I found the comment. <laughs> oh cool what, I, I, found what the say? I, I said i'm more surprised you didn't have anything to say about the interview subject smiley face and then larry said uh i thought it was like shooting fish in a barrel if i said anything <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's definitely a larry, a larry uh, yeah. they follow that up saying that he did appear in three of my early videos when i did the retro corner but he's probably not even aware i exist <laughs> yeah <laughs> the great sure thing is, but yeah, um, I mean the great thing about those those um, sort of bullfrog videos is that like you seem to recall quite a lot. You know, you would think the Saturn was yeah. just some obscure console that they just dealt with for a year and then moved on to PS One, and that's where all the fun ha happened. But he remembered everything. Yeah, oh, it was great. He remembered everything about what went on. It was it was fantastic. I literally played uh, the Saturn version after I watched your video because I've had it in my collection for ages and haven't bothered playing it. Of and it, uh, and uh, no, uh, high I octane. And yeah, it's yeah. like kind of crap. <laughs> and I played, um, <laughs> and I played, um, because you can buy it for on the PSN on the, the PS3, the PS1 no version. No flipping way, yeah, Seriously? it's available. You, you can buy it. Um, but I, I had a, I've got a quite a big PS1 collection, so I had it yeah. on that as well. Um, my PS1 collection is so big, I forget about games that I've had because it's easy to collect for that, they're so cheap. Most yeah. of there are expensive games, of course, but the library is often you'll find. Well, there's some exceptions actually. A lot I might mention later, but I played High Octane, and it is actually a lot better on the PlayStation. Um, it's kind of playable uh, on the, the yeah. PlayStation. <laughs> um, I've got it on the. I think I've got like uh, the PC and like DOSBox. I think you can get it from like good old games still or something. Yeah, you. I um, think so. Yeah, you can for sure, like, download it and play it on DOSBox for free very easily. Yeah, so. but it's amazing that that game was literally just they took the magic carpet engine and just knocked out a racing game in a matter of weeks seven that weeks ins yep. that's insane and it looks Not like something that took them a year you know <laughs> right it's it's crazy it just it, i i think i'd have to go back into my notes and watch the thing again but there was one particular develop that molyneux developer that not molyneux name dropped one particular bullfrog guy who was just like a freaking steamroller at dumping this engine out real quick he like made a track editor in his sleep essentially and that was what they used to build the game so wow <laughs> Yeah, a couple overnights with this one guy making a track editor, and boom, they had their high octane engine. <laughs> That's so, crazy. Yeah, That's absolutely insane. I mean, in terms of like, you know, when you've got a developer on and you've been able to talk talk to them, I think my personal, I've already mentioned my favorite was like SimCity 2000, and like, I love those little 
tidbits of was there issues with you know were sega going to be unhappy that their game would take up the entire save ram (laughs) you know which it does which is really annoying um but you know anything about that game the only one i know that does so yeah you're better off just firing up like mednafen and just play save staying the hell out of it you know which Mm -hmm. you can't really do on a real satin but um and was there like um out of all the the other sort of reviews that you've done deep dives was there one that you really wanted to get like a developer on but you just couldn't find it or someone that would talk talk to you yes yes the helicopter combat game black fire which all was, right yep mm. that was developed in the united states i forget the name of the development company but it's you know it's in the video it's in my notes and i did reach out to a number of people and there was one guy in particular who his linkedin said he worked at activision and so I called up Activision. I was like, hey, I'm trying to talk to this guy. And uh, they were like, all right, we'll transfer you to him. And they transferred me to him. And the phone rang, didn't answer, left a message. And I, I must have called him like six or seven times. Like I was trying to get something for a news story at work. And um, like throughout the next couple of weeks, I'd called this guy and left a message. And then only to find out that um, that was right around when Activision did a crap ton of layoffs. <laughs> Oh. oh, they're good at that. Yeah, to this day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and yeah. Uh, it is strongly believed based on context clues that I found, uh, you know, through other things online and his social media and stuff that that guy was one of them. So I was like, ah, dang it. And then I didn't have any other way to get in touch with him. And then everybody else like entirely happy to recall that yeah. beer at the time. Either. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't There's... sound fun to work at Activision no, at the moment. Definitely not. you're a lady. <laughs> No, absolutely oh, yeah. not. It's a lot oh, of really yeah. bad stuff. And apparently that stuff's been going on for years, which is just mm. mighty unfortunate. It's, you know, thank goodness they're taking care of, well, Activision themselves isn't taking care of it, but obviously the, you know, the Something's people happening. are taking care of it. You know, mm, people yeah. are made aware. So hopefully that, I mean, you know, I, I, I want to say hopefully that never happens again, but I don't really have a lot of faith in big companies like no. that. So, you just got to hope they get called out and they're forced yep. to change. That's about all we can hope for. So that's, keep that's calling it out. Do exactly yeah. exactly yeah it's yeah. funny you should mention black fire because that's kind of a guilty pleasure for me i actually kind of like really? it uh, yeah um, yeah it's, it's not awful <laughs> it's, no like when you get I mean, into it it can be fun <laughs> there's, there's another youtuber that i love uh, you might be familiar as well being sort of sega sega fan um sega lord x oh yeah um, he hates he absolutely it. hates that that game he's like it. really harsh on it and it makes me angry like just I chill know. out we know that the drawing is terrible, and if you had a hand in the game and you held it up to your face, your hand wouldn't even draw. Maybe <laughs> maybe up to your wrist, it, it, it would do maybe, it. Maybe, but... if you're lucky, yeah. yeah but it's It'd okay. Like five for a second, but... <laughs> yeah. But um, actually, you know, there's like Firestorm, and there's um, Black um, Black Dawn. Um, Black like, Dawn, other... yeah. Black Dawn's Thunderstrike good... is supposed to be pretty good. I haven't played that one, but that helicopter game is supposed to be fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, the Sands actually like th- those sort of games, those early 3D helicopter flight sim games, are actually not too bad. Although I guess you'd probably say Soviet Strike if you like helicopters and you want to play a helicopter game, that's probably the best Saturn example because it's actually quite quite a good game, especially if you like the old Desert Strike. Well, it mm-hmm. is literally part of that series, isn't it? But um, so yeah, so um, so you, you weren't able to get any um for Black Fire, but no, I wasn't. I if I do, I mean, I still occasionally reach out to some of the if I find more stuff or find more avenues to reach out to those developers like i i'm still trying to get a hold of them because i would do a like a bonus episode if i ever got a hold of anyone from blackfire one of the developers who is key into that game is unfortunately uh passed away years ago so oh um, so sure yeah yeah, yeah, yeah but you know there's still a few others who are around and just matter of getting in touch with them <laughs> yeah yeah so. um I mean, there's also you know, there's, there's tons of games on there, the Saturn, so I'm sure you've got like a, a like a wish list of people you'd like to get on. Is oh, there yeah. like kind of an ultimate person that if you could get them, <laughs> that would be like the dream? Yeah, you know, <laughs> uh, two ultimate people, uh, one of whom Yu Suzuki, obvious choice. I'd love to chat with him. Oh I, wow, yeah. I'd need yeah. to go find like a translator to be in on the call. Yeah. Um, but the uh, for a Western guy, I'd really like to do a chat with Bernie Stoller. Uh, I oh, know God, that's yeah. probably impossible. The killer of Saturn. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. And just be like, look, man, I just want to hear you out. You know, tell me what, what went down. Tell me what it was like. And um, I, I think multiple bigger names and groups have tried reaching out to Bernie before, but he's always rejected them because he doesn't want to talk about that era, um, <laughs> which is yeah. understandable. It's an so. interesting thing, isn't it? Because obviously 
I think people probably say, oh, as soon as he said Saturn's not our future, everyone stopped buying the Saturn, and that was it. It was dying at that point. I think it was probably already well on its way before. It was already, think, yeah. Had he not said anything, he just said, yeah, we're, we're, we're supporting the Saturn, and he was just said something completely like vanilla and not particularly exciting, but he just didn't say it, it's not our future. It was going to happen like, like anyway. I um, think so, too. Yeah. I mean, what, what would you say are the sort of the, 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 the top three things that, you know, were caused the failure of the Saturn? I would say number one would be the very poor relationship between Sega of Japan and Sega of America. Mm. Um, that, that to me is the biggest downfall for the Saturn. Um, yeah. Because in the Genesis era, they gave Sega of America president Tom Kalinske full reign over U.S. operations, yeah. you know, North American operations for Sega. And, and what ultimately happened is the Genesis started selling 50-50 with Super Nintendo. And I think in one year, it actually outdid it by a small margin. Um, like yeah, it was in, in Europe, but, um, and certainly in the UK, I think it, it outsold the SNES or the Super the SNES, as you would say. Um, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It did it in the UK. It was you know the, the most popular sixteen bit console here for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Mega Drive, as it's called there. <laughs> so it is indeed. Yes, yeah, <laughs> yes. I know. I, I it's it's kind of tough. Like, do I call it the Genesis or the Mega Drive or both? Like, you know, it's yeah. They're both cool <laughs> names. I'm not they like, are. Yeah. yeah, they both They're are. Cool. Yeah, but um. Yeah, so once they took the control away from him, like pretty that pretty much started immediately when the Saturn started coming out. Uh, is they he he'd originally had it planned for that Saturday, September second, and Japan was like, no, launch it early. And Tom was like, well, we don't have any games for it. And they're like, no, launch it early anyway. We want we want to beat Sony. And then yeah. the whole the whole ordeal with like, uh, there's a game, and I don't think this single game would have changed much if it still came out. But the Eternal Champions game is a good example of the control that Japan had over Sega of America. Yeah, that, uh, it was this Western developed fighting game, kind of like a comic book, more comic booky version of Mortal Kombat. Came out for the for the Genesis, came out for Sega CD, and this third game was supposed to be the ultimate version of the game, and it was going to come out in the Saturn, a U.S. fighting game. And Sega of Japan was like, "No, stop making this game. Don't release it. We don't want it to compete with Virtua Fighter 2. We want Virtua Fighter 2 to be the premier fighting game, and we're worried that if you make Eternal Champions, it'll outdo Virtua Fighter 2. Eternal it wouldn't Champions have is a great game. Like, oh yeah, it's, the, the Mega Drive game is brilliant. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. I, the visuals on yeah. it are great, and I can't imagine yeah. like how good that would have looked on on Saturn. But you know, we'll never. Yeah. Know. So, so, you know, things like that, where they were like, yeah, don't, don't do that. And then, uh, games that they wouldn't localize to America, uh, some of them got localized to Europe, but not to the United States. And yeah. Um, and, uh, uh, those, is a good one. Mm -hmm, and like, yeah, yep. fine okay. example there. That one almost came yeah. out here. Symphony yeah. of the Night would have done well. Um, obviously. There's other shooters as well. Like uh, I really like uh, like the Gradius double pack. Yeah, that came out in mm -hmm. Japan. That, that, I mean, we, Gradius is popular, certainly in Europe. We got the other games. Oh yeah, um, it was popular over here. in America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, like um, we had, we had it on like we got the NES versions. We had home computer versions of those. The arcade um, uh, version was popular. So I don't know what the issue there. Although no one got it in in Western uh, the Western side. Um, it was on the PlayStation as well. But they did a lot of those. There's a Salamander double deluxe pack on the Saturn as well, which is um, Life Force mm -hmm. and um, and Salamander in, in one. Weirdly, later on on the PSP, we got like the Gradius um, collection uh, in in Europe and I think in the States as well. Yeah. And Parodius, I think we got um, you got Parodius, got Parodius, yeah, 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 Parodius. Uh, that, yeah. You got Keo Flying Squadron too, even, and I think yes. Darius two, the port of Darius two, came we did. out in, in PAL regions. But, I don't know what the what the, the the logic behind them coming out here and not over there. I mean, I shooters yeah. tend to be quite quite popular in in Europe, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so then maybe that that helps, but I think they are in America as well. So you they know. are, especially now. Yeah. So I don't know what the deal was, but anyway. So I think I could go on about the horrible you know relationship between the two parent companies, but I think that's the number one thing that led to the downfall ultimately. I mean, Second, I think would be. Um, the lack of good sports games and i don't like sports games personally but yeah that was a big sega sports was a big driving force of the genesis a lot of the top selling genesis games were sports yeah. games and yeah. they lost that focus when they uh when saturn came out they they could have kept it and they just they just didn't and then sega I think, uh, has a good point where there was a really good nfl game at launch whereas the ps1 had game day didn't it straight away i like yep. nfl games um so yeah they built absolutely well I mean, we got like there was there was like EA did do Madden like ninety seven and ninety eight, which actually are quite good. But there was that awful Sega um, NFL ninety seven, I think, was probably the first one um, that came out on the Saturn. But yeah, that didn't help at all, did it? It didn't. Uh, no. And then I think the third thing would be uh, 
and at, not the 32x itself the you know the console 32x is fine but the the games that the 32x got that the saturn didn't like yeah, if they had yeah. done like the star wars arcade game yeah if they had God, done yeah. like a shinier maybe 2.5 d version Just of Sonic up TV. Up yeah even the, that frame rate that would be right. fine yeah yeah that would have you know that was also a big uh, to me, a big reason for why the Saturn, because like it should have had stuff like Sonic and the sports games and like those really killer arcade games and ports that the 32X guy the Saturn did. It should have had that right away, and it did. An, not, an easy so. win um, that I thought, you know, maybe this is like 2020 hindsight, which is always, you know, a cheap, right, cheap yeah. thing, isn't it? I think an easy win would have been just a Saturn port of Sonic CD. Yeah, um, there's people that went to the Saturn that never were interested in getting a Mega CD. Mm-hmm. They were like, oh, "I want to get the. I love Sonic. Uh, if it, uh, what, I'll get the. Um, I'll get Sonic CD now. Yeah, for the Saturn for sure. You could, you know, you could maybe, t- you know, add some extra features in. Um, maybe do maybe have had Sonic Jam ready to go with Sonic CD included as as, as the pack in game with the Saturn. Yeah, oh, exactly. That, that would have been easy. Yeah. yeah. It really would have, uh, you know, fun fact. And I, I didn't have this in the bug video originally because yeah. uh, I didn't join the podcast and they didn't interview David Warhol until afterward. But bug uh, was originally yeah. going to be a Sonic game. Um, oh, really? Yeah, it oh, was originally wow. going to be a Western developed Sonic game. And then midway through Sega of Japan was like, Mm-mm, nope, don't. Yeah. <laughs> and probably a good things. Bug bug is OK, but I'm yeah, sure that would work as a Sonic game. I guess you're just racing around the those sort of weird sort of pyramid like boxy looking boxing, <laughs> yeah, yeah platforms. It's just it's just a bit too janky, and it's good that yeah, it was his own his own franchise. Um, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> so um, obviously we're coming up to an hour now, so we'll try and wind down. But um, you've obviously got your amazing you know Pandemonium reviews of um, Saturn. What's going to happen? when you review pandemonium on your pandemonium channel <laughs> i thought about that you know i i thought that um anytime the word pandemonium like the actual word came up i would do what i did in the shanghai triple threat video where it would just like go into the theme song and it would just be like crazy trippy videos of pandas for 10 seconds <laughs> so anytime that, that word comes yeah. up I'll, I'll do that so and then i i thought about that and then like uh once i realized that there's a game called pandemonium <laughs> <laughs> like all right might not well, look too great seizures think, might in yeah it might i might have to put in a seizure warning for that episode but um <laughs> i i you know that game itself is already a trippy game i don't know if you've played pandemonium but it's, it's oh, a yeah, very like colorful game. psychedelic looking thing and maybe me doing that type of thing every time that word came up would almost be a compliment to the style yeah. of the game. It's, it's just a good be... port as well. It's got it a is. decent port on it the is. Saturn as well. Yeah. I'll try to get interviews for it. You know, I'm sure that episode, no matter what I get or don't get, it will be an event. <laughs> so we'll look forward to it. Yeah. What's that? What episode is that? A hundred something? That's pretty That'll far around gone. That will be. Yeah. I think when we're hitting 97, I think is when it got, got the port of that. Um, yeah. Oh, that'd but, be episode um, 192. So uh, stay tuned. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Put that in the calendar. Um, <laughs> so I've got sort of two more. Um, what will be like the, the last questions? Probably they, they, hopefully they'll be quick, but um, we'll see how we go. Um, so is there a Saturn game that you're really looking forward to doing that's coming up? That'll be the one that you feel like you're just going to end up going all out on because perhaps it's a personal favorite of yours. Ooh, yeah. Um, I mean, Darius Gaiden is my top favorite Saturn game. So that will oh, for sure right, be cool. nice but I really am looking forward to the galactic attack episode just because I, I think that that, um, that game is like the game design on that is like extremely well done. I think that it's like Wario land for write a book about it levels of like really good. It's game galactic design. attack. Is that the same as race storm? It's race storm, like, isn't it? Yeah. Layer yeah. Section. yeah. It's had four it. names. <laughs> Yeah. Ray Storm yeah. was on the Saturn as well, the 3D, which is a really good game, but I only, only in Japan. It's, it's good at the port's good as well. Yeah, mm. but yeah, on the Saturn. Yeah, it's Layer Section in Japan, Ray Force in American arcades, and then Ray Storm. And I want to say Europe. I think it was yeah. Ray Storm in Europe. And then it's called Layer Section over here. In... Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, on the PS1, um, the port, um, it was um, Layer Section, I think was the first one. Then it was oh, Ray crazy. Storm, was the sequel. And then there was Ray Force or something. I've got about three or four of them. Yeah, they're really yeah. good. I love those games. Yeah, I uh, know there was a remake, isn't there, on PSN and the Xbox 360 of Ray Storm that you can get. I got the um, iPhone remake where you can move the ship around with the touchscreen. Oh god, it's is cheap that... as hell. <laughs> I guess it just auto fires for you or something, right? It does. Yeah. And, yeah. Since you can just move as fast as your thumb can move, it's like it's too easy. But <laughs> yeah, 
but yeah, yeah, that one I'm looking forward to. And I plan to edit that in um, HD three by four in like sideways uh, Tate mode. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> you do like, it's gonna uh, be done. yeah, yeah. So uh, I, I, that'll be a fun, that'll be a fun video to edit. So I mean, it's going to be vertical. It'll be, it'll be iPhone friendly. <laughs> so <laughs> don't think about that mobile view on these, uh, yeah. on our YouTube videos. Um, so um, another one, um, if, so you also, you know, we know we love the Saturn, we love the Saturn as well, but perhaps if you had an opportunity, you know, you suddenly got a load more hours available and in your week and you wanted to go and do a similar thing for another system or computer, um, what would be sort of the next console that you'd like to do a similar kind of, you know, show like a, a YouTube show reviewing every game for? Is there a system you'd like to tr try that as, for as well? Ooh. Uh, before I answer the question, I will say that originally my original thought was to do this for N64 games because I thought they'd get more views. Oh, right. Yeah. But I, I like the Saturn a whole lot more. So I'm like, no, nah, I want to enjoy doing it. I don't want to do it because I yeah, think it'll exactly. get more views. And so I. But if I were to do this for another console, I think the the most logical, reasonable next step would be to do it for the Dreamcast. Because um, yeah. I, I really, really like the Dreamcast a lot, too. So if I were to somehow get to episode 246 by the end of the year or whatever, which, I, you know, that's not going to happen. But, <laughs> but <laughs> if I were to do another series, if I decided I'm going to do another another console yeah, the the Dreamcast would be would be better up. Hopefully, the developers would still be alive when that uh, whenever I get to that point. <laughs> you got a few extra years, like uh, lead time, as the Saturn was obviously. Oh, the Dreamcast is newer. Right, as well. right. <laughs> you might be okay. <laughs> yeah, cool. I think I think doing that for the Virtual Boy might be fun too, because there's only like two games that came out for the Virtual Boy. So it'd be yeah, and there's cool. a few. There's a few, isn't there? That are like that. I mean, I'll, I would say like something like the Turbo Graphics, but then you have got the Turbo Views guy. Yeah, he's really, he got a really good channel that basically does what you're doing. Um, nice. Might, doesn't do the deep dives like documentary style, but they're cool. Mm -hmm. and the N64, then there's a like Glenn Plant is the um, Glenn Plant. Yeah, Glenn, yeah. Glenn Plant. I've yeah, I've seen a few of his videos. I enjoy him. Uh, Jeremy Parrish does similar stuff too. His his yeah. works pretty. Yeah, good. The, the the works uh, series. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, There's also another amazing. channel, a little known guy, uh, Atari Archives. I don't know if you guys have heard of it. He's doing what I'm doing for the 2600 for the uh, Atari VCS, as some call it. Um, oh, God, that'll take years. That's like a thousand games he, or something. What's funny is that he's he's a reporter for the Associated Press. So so he's got a very similar background uh, to, oh, wow. to me. <laughs> so he's Good he's, connections uh, as well, I guess. <laughs> exactly. So he's... <laughs> Uh, he, he, his, his stuff's pretty good. I'd highly, if you enjoy uh, what I'm doing, you'll like Atari archives for sure. Uh, he's only got like a thousand or so subscribers, but his, his work's great. I really enjoy oh, that. Cool. Guy. Yeah. We've done a bit of Atari VCS stuff lately. We had a zero page homebrew who do a really good channel that review homebrew games. Some of them are absolutely astonishing nice. stuff that people are doing. Like someone like he recently did, um, showed uh, doom for the VCS and it's what? actually no. like an FPS. <laughs> Hang on, I gotta look yeah. that up. <laughs> you need to check it out. Um, a zero page homebrew and he's got one of his streams. Um, um, it's, it's, oh. it's on there. So yeah, definitely check it out. It's an amazing uh, console, the stuff they, they're doing. Uh, to these days and also the Saturn is obviously getting um homebrew as well i think you did you've done some videos yourself haven't you on yeah. those oh like uh, sonic Z, oh, Zed, yeah. Zed stream and all that stuff mm -hmm. yeah yeah there's so much good stuff for the homebrew for saturn right now um and that's like i think 2019 there was sort of like a homebrew renaissance that started there uh like right yeah. around when sakura wars and uh linkle liver stories trans fan translations were coming out that was really when things got going and yeah, Sonic Sonic Z Stream or Z Stream, yeah, um, that that one's really good. And that same guy's making Hell Slave, which is like um, like a like a Quake clone type game, and it's doing stuff on the Saturn that none of the commercially released first person yeah. shooters ever did. It's doing it's four like player Quake split Two team. kind of yeah, like Quake Two, which is amazing, isn't it's it? Yeah, incredible. Yeah, yeah. what what that uh, XL Two is that homebrew developer's name. There's also some really good stuff coming out from. Uh, there's a guy named Seven Shades who's working on a platformer called Cube Cat. And then, uh, hang on a second, there's another guy. I got to look him because the name of the game escapes me right now. Um, hang on a second. I've seen Cube Cat. It kind of gave me, gave me sort of shades of a croc, but yeah. um, not quite the same where you're just trying to get to an exit. Well, you are trying to get an exit, but yeah, very cool. Noah and the Paludes is the other one. That's like a 3D platformer that uh, Homebrew developer is working on that's looking really good. Uh, I'd recommend oh, wow. looking into that. That wasn't in the Homebrew contest. Um, yeah. from last year but there's a ton of like 
patches and translations. Like there's a team working on a bulk slash translation right now where they're getting like actual voice actors to redub the characters in English. And they actually had me on to revoice the narrator for the ending cutscene. So oh, wow. <laughs> look out for oh, that. Wow. You're <laughs> in a Saturn game. I'll be in a game. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's the dream. That is yeah. the dream. <laughs> <laughs> but, That's amazing. Um, there's some really cool stuff happening with the Saturn homebrew scene right now, and it's only been growing. It hasn't shown any signs of slowing down. Uh, the Grandia translation, Symphony of the Night's translation that came out yeah. from Night of Dragon, that one's really good. He also, yeah. uh, that same English translation, he made it so that you can look at the map without having to oh, wait for a, on the a week. Version, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the PS1 version is so much more easy. You can just oh, go it and jump on yeah. the map. Yeah. And you there, need but... it for that game. Mm-hmm. But yeah, <laughs> a lot of great stuff happening with homebrew right now. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, so, Nick, um, where can people find you on the internet? Where can they catch your shows? Are you on any other podcasts? Have you got a website? Yeah. So, obviously, if you go to YouTube and look up Pandemonium Reviews Every US Sa- uh, Sega Saturn Game, you'll find me there. Uh, I'm on the Sega Saturn Shiro podcast with uh, Dave, Pat, Peter, and Ben. Um, oh, wicked. And every week, the, the, the Shiro boys do the Shiro show. Usually it's Pat and Dave who do it. Sometimes I go on. They do that every Friday where they talk about like the last week of news and Saturn homebrew and hardware stuff, which surprisingly, they're able to find content to talk about every week. So, <laughs> wow. <Well, laughs> you know, I don't know how we do it, but stuff keeps happening and we keep hearing about it. So, yeah. Um, you know, any updates with like the Satiator or Fenrir and stuff like that. Um, and then obviously homebrew scene patches and discoveries and interviews and stuff like, you know, we talk about that every week and um, yeah, they brought me on the podcast a couple of years ago. The Shiro boys are, have been very, very good to me. <laughs> yeah. So. That's quite a bit of a legendary um, sort of site, isn't it? The Shiro, um, Saturn, Sega Shiro site. So yeah, for, for Se- Saturn fans, it's a little go-to place, isn't it? SegaSaturnShiro.com. That's right. Yeah. Um, check us out on the website. Check us out on YouTube. We've got a channel there. Um, yeah. Awesome. Cool. Um, well, Stu, where can you find us? Find us on ConsoleShock.net. Uh, find us on any uh, podcast client, so iTunes, Stitcher, uh spotify uh google you can also find us on um twitter under console shock under facebook and youtube both under console shock cool um well thank you so much for joining us nick it's been great chatting uh, about the sega saturn with you oh yeah sorry for the long drawn out answers <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no that's what we want really good. <laughs> that's what we need we worried if it was the other way so no we right really on. appreciate it Check out Nick on his YouTube channel. Uh, Obviously, he'll be posting more amazing documentaries and reviews of Saturn games. Thank you for listening to Console Shock. Take care, and we'll see you in the next one. See you, guys.